easy. Whoa, getting excited. All right, so today it's June Raves and Rejects. This is gonna be a long video, folks, because I didn't do one of these the last month. I don't think I did one the month before that either. So I have a ton of products here to talk about, a ton of raves and a ton of rejects. Let's get into things. If you're excited for this video and you enjoy while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. All right, so I would say the last probably three or four months at this point, I've been testing a ton of different cleansing balms, cleansing oils. I'm gonna be doing a video breaking down my favorites and least favorites and kind of getting more into it, but I have two standout products that I wanted to mention to you guys. Both are affordable. Both are, well, one's from the drugstore, one's, let's just get into it. So this one is the 4th Ray Beauty brand. This is actually from ColourPop. 4th Ray is their new skincare line and it's called BFD Cleansing Oil. You get four fluid ounces of product. It retails for $14, so pretty affordable. But let me just say, this is one of the best cleansing oils I have ever tried. Up there with like my fresh seaberry cleansing oil, this one doesn't burn my eyes. It takes off everything. Like if you have waterproof mascara on, it takes it off so easily and it just feels really nourishing on the skin. It doesn't leave that gross residue that I hate. It washes everything off, like the oil comes off your face but your skin doesn't feel stripped afterwards. If you've been looking for an affordable cleansing oil, it's bomb, it's also cruelty free. And the scent of it, to me, just smells very, it smells like a spa but it doesn't smell like too fragranced. It smells like there's some kind of natural fragrance in here. Another cleansing, Makeup removing, what I'm trying to say. Another product I've been using to remove my makeup is the Physicians Formula 3-in-1 Melting Cleansing Balm. <gasps> oh my gosh. Ever since I tried this, I've been hooked. I'm literally over halfway out of this. I've used a ton. I've also been scooping this out to put in a little travel container, so I brought this with me on all my trips. This has such a buttery, melty kind of feel to it. I've tried something like the Elemis Cleansing Balm where it's kind of more of like a thick, waxy feel. This is the total opposite. It feels very light and airy, but still takes everything off. Again, doesn't leave like a gross residue on your skin. The only thing to be aware of with this one is that it has a super strong fragrance. I don't usually like fragrance in my skincare or my foundation or anything like that. It doesn't smell bad, like it actually smells really good, but not something that I would wanna like use on my face. I would rather have that scent in like a body spray, but I will definitely be repurchasing this once I'm out. I've been using it a shit ton. I've basically been like alternating between these and then the other ones I've been testing. Did a five minute makeup routine video, used this in there, and I've been using this anytime I'm not doing like a full face of makeup where I'm not wearing foundation or anything. I should say what it is. It's the Flesh Startle. It's like a cream highlight. It kind of just gives you the glow without being like super colored. Okay, it's not doing it justice on my hand right now. When it's on your face, it like melts in and it just looks so natural and it looks like your skin is just glowing without having glitter in it. That's the thing I hate with any kind of like, especially cream highlights because you want them to look just super natural. I actually have it on today underneath my makeup so you can use it like that too if you just wanna give your skin that like extra glow or if you know you're gonna be using more of a matte foundation. And it does kind of come through. Right now I'm wearing the A Cosmetic CC Cream. This is a matte one that I'm trying out in the shade Fair Light. This is actually the first time I'm putting it on, but since I knew I was gonna be using like a totally matte foundation, I wanted to add a little bit of glow underneath, so I use this. I think my skin tone to probably like a medium skin tone could probably get away with wearing this because it's not super white, it just more gives you like that glowed look once you blend it in. Glowed, glowed is now a word. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw all the pictures, but I've been in, I was in four different places. So I was in Portland, Hawaii, London and San Diego. I did a pack with me video and I, in between all these trips, I did change out those products a lot. So some of the stuff you'll probably recognize, but some other stuff I just added in and switched out. When I was in Hawaii, I was wearing self tanner every day and I was obviously in the water a ton. So I kind of just tried new products and one thing totally shocked me. This is the Drunk Elephant De Bronzi Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops. So normally, if you wake up in the morning and you know your body is super tan and your face is white, you would have to put on something to make it match, whether it was like a foundation or tinted moisturizer or something. And I loved these because you can basically just mix in however much you want with your SPF and it gives you a super bronzy kind of look, but it doesn't look orange. It looks really natural and it just matched my body self tanner perfectly. You don't need a lot of these and I wouldn't use them on their own. They're kind of like a little bit more difficult to blend out if you use it on their own. So mix it in with your SPF. I could go in the water and it stayed on. Like it lasted pretty dang well throughout all of the water 
activities and things in Hawaii. And it's also glowy. So it just gives you the prettiest glowy tanned kind of look. I'll definitely be using this throughout the summer anytime I have self-tanner on. So speaking of self-tanner, I'm going to talk about two products here. The first is a self-tanner eraser that I found through you guys because I did a video testing out two other self-tan removers that didn't do anything compared to this. It's intense. This is the Bondi Sand self tan eraser. It smells like hair dye. Major chemicals in here. It smells exactly like hair dye. So when I came back from London, I also was wearing self tanner in London. I was trying a different one in London, which is in my rejects pile, which you will hear about, that was horrible. Like it was orange, it was patchy, it wore off terrible. And I needed something to like fully get it off when I got home. This is friggin incredible. So basically you put it on dry skin. It says leave on for five, at least five minutes. I usually leave it on for around 10 minutes. It doesn't look like it's doing anything because it basically just like absorbs into your dry skin. But then once you get in the shower, use like a scrubby mitt thing and it literally like peels off almost. It fully comes off. It's amazing. Instead of sitting there and like trying to scrub with a thing for 15 minutes on your body and you like feel like you're getting raw from scrubbing so much, Use this thing, it fully takes it off, especially if you use a scrubby mitt with it. It's great, totally worth the money. Gonna continue to use this to get off my self-tanner. So speaking of self-tanners, this is probably my all-time favorite. This is the Saint Tropez Self-Tan Express. I've been using this for a few years now. It is amazing because you can leave it on for one hour, two, or three, depending on how dark you want it, or you can sleep in it. I've slept in it and it's totally fine. I think it just kind of stops developing throughout the night, so it looks totally fine if you sleep in it, if you like to sleep in your tanners. I personally hate sleeping in tanners because you just get the sheets dirty and it's like you're sticky, especially in the summer. So this is incredible because if you want a light, natural looking tan, you can do an hour. I usually leave this on for about two hours and it just develops the nicest tan, not orangey color. It's not too olive, but it's not too orange. If you have fair skin, you need to try this out. This bottle is actually fully empty right now, so I already purchased a new one of these. The only thing is it could just be on my body because I haven't found any self tanners that last like amazing throughout water and stuff. It does fade, so... I would apply this like every other day or like a couple days in a row and then skip a couple days in Hawaii. So it's not one of those for me that I can just apply it once and then go like a week. But again, I haven't found any self tanners like that. I usually have to apply, especially if I'm going in the water like multiple times a day. This is the Bare Minerals Highlighter in the shade Joy. And when I first saw this, I thought it was gonna be way too dark and it's obviously like a salmon pinky color. I have fallen in love with this thing. I have it on right now. The way I apply this, since it is, it's a pink highlight, so you know, it doesn't reflect to like super light or anything. It looks pretty much like how it is in the pan. So I bring it down further than I normally do my highlight because it almost looks like a blush topper kind of thing. I don't apply it to my nose because it looks too pink. I only put it on my cheekbones. Both when I had self tanner on, I brought this on all my trips. And when I had self tanner on, it looked incredible. It gives you that like, sun-kissed kind of glow and then I can also wear it when I have fair skin and it just I don't know it looks so stunning it doesn't emphasize my texture it just gives you that like wet look kind of highlight I love that it adds a little bit of like a sun-kissed look because of the tone two bronzers that I've been using pretty much every single day are the Maybelline City Bronzer in the shade 100 and the Bare Minerals Bronzer in Faux Tan. Both of these I've mentioned so many times. This one is definitely quite a bit darker, so I feel like that one looks a little bit better when I have self-tanner on, but I can totally wear it on my skin tone like this as well, my natural skin tone, but you can see they're totally different colors. This one is way lighter. My best way to describe this bronzer shade is if you have fair skin, you know that Sometimes bronzers just don't, they don't look like how they're supposed to on our skin tone. They look orange, but not only that, they just don't give like the same effect as when you see a bronzer applied to like a medium or more tan or deeper skin tone. It just doesn't give like the same effect. This is the only bronzer I found, I'm wearing it right now, on my temples and on my cheeks, where it gives you that effect. Like I feel like this is how bronzers are supposed to look. It looks tan and it looks bronze without looking orange whatsoever. It's almost like a sandy tan color. It blends out easy, it's pigmented. I just, I'm so in love. If you have fair skin, 
you gotta try this out. And then this one I would say if you want a deeper bronze, but again, you don't want that orange, like this one doesn't pull orangey at all on me. It looks like it's gonna be totally dark, but again, just use a light hand, it blends out beautifully. I can use this on self tanner and not. I just love the tone of this one. I've been using this guy, I wanna say for the last probably two months solid. This is the Sunday Riley CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum. So for months I had been kind of switching between the Drunk Elephant C Firma, a Tatcha one, a Paula's Choice one, like a few different vitamin C serums. Every time I was switching between all those, the one I wanted to use the most was the Sunday Riley CEO. The unique thing about this C serum is that it's more of like a glowy lotion that doesn't give you that like orangey kind of look. So a lot of C serums, if you apply them in the morning, you can't really wear a lot of them if you're not putting on foundation because some of them can just make your face look like weirdly tan or like orangey. This one is basically just, okay, wow, it just pumped out way too much. But this one is like a white cream. So when you blend it into your skin, it feels super nice and moisturizing. If you have dry skin, you'd probably love this. But it feels and looks like a glowy lotion. It smells amazing. It smells like oranges. I do feel like overall this does kind of help with the dark spots and brightening my complexion. I also attribute a lot of that to rosehip oil. Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I have re-fallen in love with this guy. I've been using this every single day for about the past four weeks, probably three, four weeks, and it just looks so friggin' good. It gives me the coverage I like. It's moisturizing. It's creamy, but it doesn't crease a ton. It like sets down. I just love this concealer. This is the shade 15. I've tried the lightest two shades now that they recently came out with, like within the last year or two. I think it's the shade five and 10, and both of those are super yellow. So undertone wise, I'm definitely closer to 15, but as you can see, it's like kind of my skin tone. It's not super brightening or anything, but I don't really mind because I use powders to brighten. But if you have major issues with creasing underneath your eyes, I get creasing regardless. So any powder, any concealer, whatever, I have lines under there, so it's gonna crease. But this one, I feel like looks so much less cakey and it cakes and creases less. This is the Matte Velvet Skin Blurring Powder Foundation from Makeup Forever. I'm using this one for about three and a half weeks probably. This one was like a slow and steady growth. I liked it when I first tried it. I wasn't like totally in love, but the more I figured out how to use it for my skin, the more I fell in love with it. So I have the shade Y215. I also use the shade R220 if I have self tanner on, but this is the shade, whoa, this is the shade I use if I'm just this skin tone right now. So I love this because I can use this in a few different ways. I mix this in with my Maybelline Superstay for underneath my eyes and it gives you such a pretty blurred and like smooth look under there, which is hard to achieve if you have a lot of lines under there like I do. It gives you that really pretty just soft look underneath your eyes. And then I just go in with the same powder and I apply it right here, which is usually only where I set my face. Sometimes I'll bring it up to here if I'm gonna be putting bronzer there. But I love it because I have some scarring and stuff right here on my face. And when I go in with this powder, it just fully covers it up after my foundation. So it just gives you kind of like that extra layer without looking powdery. It does give you almost like a blurred soft matte finish. So I do totally get why they named this blurring powder foundation. It is quite blurring. So that's how I most often use it, but probably about five times I've used it only as a powder foundation without any kind of liquid foundation underneath. When I was in San Diego, I wore it like that a few times just because I was feeling super lazy and like I didn't want to put on like a full liquid foundation and set it and do all that. So I just went in with this and I actually like using this thing that it comes with. I have a different one that's in my like travel thing that I used, but I also like using just a normal powder brush. I'll use it with like this It Cosmetics brush. It doesn't look on my skin, having dry skin, it doesn't look as flawless as my J-Cat Aquasurance powder foundation, which I have a whole video on, but for being a matte powder on dry skin, it looks pretty dang good. And especially if you put like a dewy setting spray or something over top, it looks like totally wearable. I just feel like I crease a little bit more with this and it looks a little bit more makeup-y than the J-Cat when I use it as a powder foundation. So usually I'll wear it the first two ways I told you, but it can also work as a powder foundation. Not gonna go too crazy about this because it's just a blush, but it is such a pretty shade. I'm wearing it right now. I've been using this a ton. This is the Catrice Glistening Pink Blush. You've probably heard me talk about this five million times the past couple months. It's just a easy, whoa, getting excited. It's just an easy go-to pink blush with like a little bit of a sheen to it. It looks like it's gonna have glitter when you're looking at it in the pan. I don't ever notice like, 
you know, glitter on my face from it. It just gives you a really pretty summery, warm, pink kind of look. It doesn't lift up the foundation underneath. It's affordable. Love it. I have a few standout lip products that I've been reaching for most often, and I'm wearing them right now. So the first is this liner by Morphe. It's the Love Bite liner. It's just one of those liners that you can use with pretty much any kind of nude lip. It lines my lips nicely to where it gives them some shape, but it doesn't look too dark or like too intense for an everyday nude kind of look. You can lighten it up really easily. I just love the tone of this. It is more cool toned. It's not like super peachy or anything. So I'll usually put this on and then put kind of just like a combination of these three products on. So two of them are by CoverGirl. I'm wearing 230 cream right now on my lips with the Love Bite liner. Here's 230 cream and here's 225 Dolce de Leche. So this one is lighter and more of, let me swatch on my hands. Okay, they're looking a lot more similar on camera. On my lips, they do look a little bit different. This one is definitely more pinky peachy of a nude. This is cream and then here's Dolce de Leche which is more of like a nude nude. The formula of these are more creamy so they're not going to be like super super long lasting. So if you want something that's going to like stay on throughout the day and you don't need to reapply, this is not that. These are like just, you know, kind of like a traditional cream lipstick. So I want something super long lasting. I always wear a liquid lipstick. And then the other one is Best of Me. This is the MAC Powder Kiss. And this one is super light. You can like barely see it on my hand. You can use this to lighten any nude. If you want to, like we could do it right now. You can just mix it in and there you go. So this one, it's hard to find nudes that are actually this light. So if you want that super nude dead kind of look, I never wear this on its own. It's like a dead nude if you do that. You could, you do you. But for me, I just love mixing it. And then a newer discovery that I've been using every single day since I discovered this. I use this in a first impressions video. Keep in mind that my videos are pre-recorded, so I've actually been using things for longer than it shows up to you in your feed, but this is the CoverGirl True Naked in the shade 900. This is their cream shadow stick. I love this as an eyeshadow primer, and like I mentioned in that first impressions video, it's hard to find bases that are this light. Like, they pretty much don't exist. This is lighter than my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre, which I use all the time. I've used that one for years. The reason why I like this one is because it is basically... Like you can't even see it because it, it is my skin tone, which is so nice because I don't need to apply anything over top if I don't want to. So if I just want my eyelids to be concealed, I do have like freckles and discoloration and stuff on my eyelids. So I almost never leave them as is. I'll usually apply something, whether it's like a light eyeshadow or the MAC Paint Pot. This one, because of the shade, I can just apply it and go. I don't need to put anything over top but it's also a really great eyeshadow base. It has just the right amount of tackiness to it. It has like a little bit of grit, but it's not as tacky as the MAC Paint Pot. So you could go either way. You could set it, you could use it with eyeshadow over top, or you could just use it as is. And then final products that I'm gonna mention in the raves category are the number seven Match Made Foundation Drops. I guess there's two different kind of foundation drops from number seven. The ones that I'm talking about look like this right here. I have the shade Porcelain and Cool Beige. So Cool Beige I use when I'm darker if I have tanner on and Porcelain is my shade if I don't. These are so great to travel with because they're super tiny. You need like a drop of these. They're just great for mixing in with other foundations or mixing in with a moisturizer. I showed how I do that in the five minute makeup routine video. They have great coverage. You can use these in so many different ways. Like I feel like this is one of those products that you could probably find a way to love these depending on what you're what your goal is with them. They just look like skin, love the coverage, love how versatile they are. I just found these so useful for traveling too because then you don't have to bring a ton of different foundation shades, especially if you're gonna be tanning and it's like wearing off and changing shades and whatever. All right, folks, on to the rejects. I'm gonna try and make these pretty speedy because I've got a lot. So the first one, horrible. This is the Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face Waterproof Setting Spray. Oh my God, I, I don't know like how this is approved to put on your face. The fragrance is so freaking strong. It literally is like a hairspray. If you like spray this over your whole face, like normally you do with a setting spray, it burns the crap out of your eyes and the scent lingers. It's literally like you sprayed a perfume all over your face. It is not good, would not recommend putting this on, especially if you have sensitive skin. Next is a reject from a matte collection that recently launched. This is Serenity Seeker. This is very odd. So it looked like it was gonna be like a glowy pink gold blush topper kind of situation or a highlight. 
This is pretty bad. It feels so chalky. I'm hoping that that kind of like chalkiness and chunkiness is going to pick up on camera. When you blend it out, it is just super glittery and like chalky feeling on the skin. It's just avoid this one. Next up are two concealers that really did not work out for me. One is by Morphe, one is by Kylie Cosmetics. I love the KKW concealer. If you have not tried that concealer and you like full coverage matte concealers that don't crease badly, the KKW one is bomb. This Kylie one I was hoping would be like similar to that. Not similar at all. It almost like lifts up and gets like patchy on my skin. It does not give me good coverage. I just all around don't love this concealer at all. Same thing with the Morphe. It's almost like, it reminds me of the Fenty a little bit. It's so dry. I don't get good coverage. Same kind of situation with these. I would just totally avoid both of these. All right, so this is the self tanner that I referenced earlier. And I tried this, I have the full size of this too, but I tried this tanner, I wanna say last summer. And I remember thinking like, what the heck? Like when I applied it, I remember thinking maybe it was just like a fluke. Maybe, I don't know, I just needed to try it some more. So I gave it another go. I have this travel size, which is why I brought this one to London. I was just thinking like, okay, it's the same brand as the one I love. You know, it's in travel size. I'll just bring this one instead of bringing this to London. Bad, bad, poor mistake on my part. It was the bronzing water mousse. When you're putting it on, you can't see where you're applying it because it's clear, which I think some people like because then they can just get dressed right away and they don't have a color guard. And then some people would probably not like. I don't really mind it. Like I feel like I can still get an even-ish tan with this for being clear. The issue is that it is friggin' orange. It looks so orange on my skin and it also wears off horribly. It gets so patchy. My feet in London were so awful. They literally had like patches around my ankle. It just like gathered super weird in parts of my body. As the days went on, it got worse and worse and worse. If you're debating getting this one, just don't get this one instead. All right, so the 35G by Morphe was one of those things that I tried like a couple shades in a video one time, it was fine. And then the more I was trying this, the more I was confused. This just doesn't have the same kind of quality that a lot of other Morphe palettes have. I usually love shimmer shades and everything in the Morphe palettes. They're usually really nice and buttery and pigmented. And these ones, it's like a different formula. It's very odd. It looks like they're gonna be super metallic in the pan, but then when you actually use them, it like, doesn't come off and even when it's on your finger or your brush and it looks like it's going to be nice when you press it onto your lid again i've tried it with finger and brush the metallic shades just don't come off like you can't get them to look nice on your lid at least i can't i just feel like there's so much better morphe palettes out there the mattes in here were fine but the shimmers they did something different if you saw my boots makeup first impressions video you know <laughs> this was a total flop. Let me shake this up so you can see the full effect. It's the Obsession Lightning Glow Illuminating Fixing Spray. It's like straight up silver glitter metallic spray. I don't know how you're supposed to use this as an all over setting spray or anything to do with your face. It looks so awful. It literally like puts glitter into your pores. So ever since I took out my NBR extensions, I've been just kind of wearing my hair natural. So this is my hair uh, like third day natural. So not great. I added like a couple curls in here, but this is for the most part natural. But my hair, when I was in Hawaii and in the salt water and everything, I'll pop in a picture, but my hair can get pretty wavy and curly if I'm using the right products. I just haven't worn my hair natural for so long that I'm kind of like rediscovering how to style it. So I asked you guys on Snapchat for curly hair product recommendations because I mentioned that I've been trying this one, which a lot of people do really like, and it just doesn't work for my hair at all. I've tried it sleeping on my hair wet, which is usually how I have to wear it if I want the curls to look best. I'll just sleep on it damp with like product in it. If I just try and shower and then go out with my hair curly, it usually gets super frizzy and like looks horrible. So I've tried it both ways. This is the Light Defining Curl Gel by Diva Curl. If there are better products from them to try for curls, let me know. But this literally does nothing, like literally nothing to my hair. It feels like it almost makes my hair like frizzier. I don't know. I just, this really doesn't work for me. And then last reject is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation. If you saw my review on this, you will understand bad. It was bad. Major separation just looked 
horrible on my skin throughout the day. It went downhill quickly. Don't think it's worth 20 bucks. I wish I ordered this from Ulta so that I could return it, but I didn't. I ordered it from their website. We're gonna be chilling together for a while, I guess. All right, so those were all of my raves and rejects from the last couple months. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you can give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Let me know what some of your favorite products were that you've discovered the last however long. Let me know what you're liking, what I need to try out. But all of the products I talked about are gonna be listed in the description box so you can go check them out. By the way, the makeup on the rest of my face, I'm pretty sure I told you pretty much everything I'm wearing besides the eyeshadow palette. So I'm wearing this new Huda Beauty neon palette, which is so pretty. I just went in with two of the shades here. So that is all my makeup. My lashes, I actually have no idea what they are because they were just sitting on my desk without like the package. But I did recently wear these in another video, so I'll try and find the name of them and put them down below. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.